Right, so it's been about three days since we've silicon this up. All of the smell has gone, which is fantastic. It's all been vented out. If there's any hint of any smell, then we're not going to work on it. It's all set, it's all dry. And what we're going to do now is install a background. And we're going to install this Zonkin Drake big bit of concrete here, absolutely massive. Um, we're going to cut it down, and these are the tools that we're going to need for the job. Tape measure, pencil, a selection of screws, because the cork has various different thicknesses. We're going to need some big old penny washers. Uh, these are M5 by 25 penny washers. Um, we don't use any adhesives here at Sidden's that I say it's where we can help it. The only adhesive we actually use is a uh, glue gun that dries absolutely permanently so there's no gassing off and of course the silicon that we just used and that's aquarium safe so that's, that's not going to cause any problems once it's gassed off. Electric screwdriver, you can use a manual one but we're lazy. And next thing you need So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the kitchen, we're going to start measuring and cutting the cork. So let's start measuring. First of all we want to measure from one side to the other, and that's about 83 centimetres, and for those of you working on inches, about 32 and a quarter inches. And when we install this cork, we don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. So we're going to actually measure it from about halfway down from the vent to the, to the floor of the vivarium there. And that gives us a layer of substrate that isn't going to have any feces or, or, or uh, urate getting under it. And then when we get to the top here, we want our cork just to be in line with the bottom of the vent. We don't want to obscure the vent, but what we want it to do is get under this edge here. The hog nose will get its nose and scoop it and pull it up under. They're quite well renowned for that. We are going to glue gun these vents in at the back, but having this cork covering up this edge here, that's a, a way of some sort of mechanical fixing. So let's get to the kitchen, start cutting. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure off our 83 centimetres. 83, 83, like so. And that's our first cut. Uh, we've measured from the vivarium to the other side. And what we're going to do, we're going to measure that out, so grab your pencil. And we know that it's going to be 41 centimetres or 16 inches for those who work in the old fashion. We'll measure of 41 centimetres, make a nice line with our pencil. 41 centimetres this side. And there's our first bit. Got a lovely texture. This cork was really, really good for hog noses. They've got those smooth underside scales, and this really gives them a bit of purchase to grip hold of. And on the top, if you leave a bit of the ledge on the top, it gives them a nice little perfect opportunity to climb up and sit on the edge, work its way around them with a climbing opportunity. Let's go and test it, see if it works. That's the cork cut. Moment of truth, does it fit properly? Let's give it a good go. It should be square, so it should fit in either way. And let's have a look. Now you can just hear how it fits just along the edge there. We want it just under the lip of that vent, just to hold that in. And what we're going to do when we secure it, we're going to put some penny washers along here, and that's going to create that mechanical fixing, really put it up against that backstop of the vivarium, make sure you're getting the same thing with bottom, you're going to screw them in and that's going to cut up any slack to stop. We don't want any stakes getting behind it, so we need to have enough mechanical fixings to prevent that. What we're going to do now because, oh no, there's a vent here, we're going to pull this vent out like so, and wait for that. And what we're going to do, we're going to install this some penny washers and then we're going to get to the back and then mark out the vent and then unscrew it again 
been cut out of the vent of the jigsaw. We've got that secured in place so it's not going to go anywhere. And then you can see this vent here, and what I've got to select on the shelf is just in case one runs out. But if we get down here, what we're going to do is ever so gently angle it in towards the cork. We go around the template. Over the vent hole. And there we are. And that's what it looks like. Got this marked out. Let's go to the kitchen, cut him out. You notice here there's three slots for wires. All you need to do is need to cut a channel in to make sure the wires can be accessed and uh, bend round okay. So, what we're going to do is cover up the vent up uh, like so. And we're just going to mark off where these channels are. Here and here with a sharpie, like so. We're just going to make a channel all the way up, up like so as well. And that's our channel. This is the bit we're going to cut out, or this. Can be a bit fiddly, but as long as you take your time with the jigsaw, you'll we'll be okay. When you're finished, you should look something like that. We need to fit this to the back of the vivarium. And once we've got that fitted, because this bit of cork is going to be different thickness to this bit of cork, so we're then going to measure the side pieces off of this back piece. That's why I always get this bit done first. Right, when we're selecting the screws for this project, we've got to make sure we've got screws that are long enough to get through this material and this material here. But they can't be so long and it goes all the way through because we don't want the screws poking out. How are we going to make sure we've got the right one? Well, sometimes it's a bit of guesswork and trying it, but what we can, can do, get a little penny wash and we can kind of estimate the size. So I've got a selection of screws here. And that does not go all the way through, so that screw is not long enough. And we can kind of get an estimate on what screws might work. You can see as we push that down, that's probably a good fit. You know, maybe a little bit longer, but you can see the idea how much we need to go through. We don't want this going through all the way through this material. You can put one through, you can feel the bite of the material. If it doesn't bite, then just put a long one in. Err on the side of caution, put the smaller ones in first because you can always put a long one in later on. Right, so let's put the first few screws in, make sure we can secure the back. And you fill it by, and then run your finger across the edge, make sure there's no gap. And that's looking good to me. Okay. And run your finger all the way along the top. There's no way a little snake can get down there. Can't even get your fingers down there. So that's good to go. Right then, I've got it in place. Fits nicely. Got the top one, two, three screws back in there again. And what we're going to do is just lift that cork up and we're going to place that vent under. That's going to give us the right spacing, nice and secure. And it's just test fitting. You can see how those wires can trade out those three holes without any interruption now. And that's why we cut that out like that. Do our test fitting again. Yeah, that looks good. Try to screw one here and run one here. So you can see how that snake could potentially crawl up under there. And then we're going to put one over this side and one over this side. That's the secure. Right, that piece is in, but let's measure it. We know it's going to be 41 centimetres, already measured that. We just need to measure from this part here to the edge of this. Not the edge of here, because obviously the glass won't close. It has to be on the inside lip. 
So if new to the cork, here, that measures 42 centimetres. That's also 42 centimetres. Just about 42 centimetres. And that's 42. So we know it's going to be 41 centimetres from top to bottom. Cut this first, measure of 42 centimetres and then another 42 centimetres off the edge. So let's get on with cutting. What we're going to do is we're going to mark 42 centimetres off the same way, off this edge and off this edge, 42 there. And that's our first piece. So we should have 41 centimetres by 42. Let's try and fit it. Moment of truth. Does this fit? Work out which side we want for top, which side we want for bottom. Uh, so that, that kind of looks quite nice that way around, I think. It's quite a thick piece here, so the thinner bit is probably quite nice for the front. So, what we're going to do is test fit it. This is the moment of truth, see if it fits. We're going to line it up top and bottom. Look at that, lovely. What we're going to do, we're going to fit it now, find the right length of screws, just exactly like we did before. Perfect. Put our fingers on the top, absolutely fine. Nice and secure. Nice and secure. Easy. Okay guys, last cut, hopefully. And we've got 41 edge here, so we just double check that, make sure that's correct. That's the 41, so that's the height. And we're take it off this side and we just the 42 that we're after. 42, 42. So there we go. That should be the last cut. Let's go see if it fits. So, we've cut out this cork, test fit. Hopefully, our measurements have been correct. Oh, look at that, lovely. Absolutely perfect. Top and bottom. Checking the gaps, all the way along the top. And if you need to put more in, we will. No, that's lovely and secure. Nothing at all can get behind that. And that is it. And the advantages of the cork, if you've got this uh, solid piece of wood, that actually conducts heat a bit better. I know the, uh, the wood's actually quite good at insulating anyway. But this cork, this zonking great thick piece of cork, is going to add thermal insulation and that climbing opportunity for your creatures. And there is a little gap you can pull it away, you've got enough strength to pull it away. All those little vines and exoterra things and Komodo things that you've got, the little pokey bits or the foliage and stuff like that, you can actually just wedge it behind and things like that. And anything that you need to clip, you can actually P-clip on with some screws. We're going to teach you how to do that in the next video about furnishing.